is 99% invisible. I'm Roman Mars. We are a culture fascinated with style. There always seems to be some award ceremony or gala where people are talking about what everyone is wearing. And it seems like it's always fashion week somewhere, am I right? Avery Truffleman, living every week like it's fashion week. And there are street style blogs and festival fashion roundups and then out of the sidewalks and the catwalks, a style emerges. And then it comes time for the mass market to get the look, which might mean graphic t-shirts are hot right now, or cobalt blue, or minimalism, or platform sneakers. And you might be saying to yourself, trends are for trendy people. I follow nerd stuff, like podcasts. I don't follow trends. They might say that, but they do. They're lying. <laughs> Professor Sarah Pettit, calling everyone's bluff. Kind of. They're not outright lying. They just don't realize what they're doing. Professor Pettit is coordinator of the Fabric Styling Program at the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York. You might not realize it, but subconsciously, you can kind of tell when styles are shifting. You may not think that what you have on is dated, but this other thing suddenly may look new to you, and it's all over all the windows, it's all over all the racks, and you probably would get influenced by that. Don't you think so? Whether or not you consciously notice it, the trend cycle is circling all around you. That's moving fast. It's not like we just have a spring fashion season and a fall fashion season. There's now a steady turnover of styles. If you go to certain stores like H&M, they change the line maybe every two weeks because Avery, how many clothes do any of us really need? They have to get us to throw our clothes out so that we buy new things. This creates manufacturing, this creates sales, and it makes the monetary retail world go round. And it's not just clothes. It's our homeware, our linens, our car, whatever. Our tastes are constantly made to change. Color is, is that kind of change, like chartreuse, may come in every five years or so. Purple can be big one year and then it takes about five years to come around again. Most trends are cyclical. The question is about timing, about when it's time for a trend to come back around again. And to get their timing right, a lot of designers and retailers and fashion students turn to one major company. People use WGSN, yes, as a school we have access to WGSN. WGSN. Which sounds more like the name of a radio station. From WGSN 90.7, your 24-hour Christian companion. It is indeed a radio station in Tennessee, but that is not the WGSN we're talking about. WGSN is the company that might have determined what you are wearing right now. And I've never heard of it. A lot of people haven't, actually. It's a little bit of an industry secret in a way. This is Sarah Owen, a forecaster at WGSN, which is a global trend forecasting agency. There are other trend forecasters and trend forecasting companies, but WGSN is the most influential. We have been around for 18 years. We're in over 94 countries in terms of clients, um, and around 6,000 companies subscribe to us. And um, what does WGSN stand for? I, this is why I'm not sure whether, because it used to be Worth Global Style Network. Worth as in Mark Worth, who founded the company in 1997. But after he sold WGSN, it was called World Global Style Network. But mostly it's just called WGSN. So I think it's kind of become an acronym that doesn't really have a meaning. And WGSN is part publishing platform, part fashion house, part research company, and what they provide is a comprehensive website behind an extremely steep paywall, like tens of thousands of dollars, depending on the size of the company and the subscription level. But pretty much every major manufacturer, design studio, and marketing company subscribes to it. And we have clients across all industries, not just retail and the fashion space. Um, so a few of our clients range from fashion companies such as Nike and Coach and H&M to um, food and beverage companies like Starbucks uh, to TV networks like NBC and Nickelodeon, so it's quite varied. WGSN reports on all kinds of trends, including behavior patterns, consumption patterns, and advertising predictions. But the majority of their users are coming at it from the design side. 
So if you are a designer, or colorist, or merchandiser for a major company or brand, you can consult WGSN to figure out what colors will be in and what styles are ahead. And whether designers heed this advice or not, it's considered essential to at least know what WGSN is saying, because they're commenting on trends they notice in a really in-depth way. So there's that level of analysis that you just can't find, and people actually just don't have the time to do themselves. And to keep ahead of the trend cycle, WGSN predicts two years in advance. That's as long as we can really look, look ahead without qualitative and quantitative analysis. Um, further out than that, and it's really quiet. It's speculating. <laughs> Guesstimation, as you want to say. But honestly, I had a really hard time.